This video is brought to you by What If? Serious Scientific Answers to Absurd Hypothetical Questions by Randall Monroe from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, available now. Randall Monroe is, if you don't know, the creator and artist behind the hugely popular webcomic XKCD. In What If? He's illustrating answers to some of the most absurd questions about science that you can think of, like how many ways could I possibly die if I tried to build an actual periodic table out of the actual elements? Or what would the relativistic effects be of a baseball traveling near the speed of light? The illustrated answers are witty, gleefully into science, deeply researched, and the book itself is a great gift for existing fans of XKCD or for anyone who is into science, the hypothetical, and exploring the absurd. So that's What If? Serious Scientific Answers to Absurd Hypothetical Questions by Randall Monroe, out now wherever books are sold. Hey guys, Rebecca Shinsky here. I'm the Director of Content for Riot New Media Group, including Book Riot and our comic site panels. And this week, instead of talking about what's in the mail or what books are coming out soon, I thought I would talk about my Book Riot origin story. We've gotten a bunch of questions lately on Facebook and Twitter and in our email inboxes about how we got these jobs at Book Riot and what exactly we do all day. And since Amanda made a video recently, I decided it was my turn to snuggle into my favorite reading chair in front of my shelves and get out of the office for a bit to talk to you about how I got here. The overarching theme of my Book Riot origin story and my career has been that there is not a unified plan. I wish that I could say that I sat down five years ago and dreamed up this kind of job and then came up with a bunch of strategic steps that I could take to get it and then did them and then got the job and poof, that's done. But it's not nearly that neat or exciting really of a story. And I think that with most jobs, that's the truth. It's really about day-to-day -day work and improvement and being lucky and qualified and in the right place at the right time. You don't know that a thing is going to be life-changing until it already is, or at least I don't know that a thing is going to be life-changing until it already is, so the, the exact order in which things happened is hazy to me. Dates are a little hazy, how long I did one task before I did another one. Um, I don't really know those specifics, but I can give you a general picture. I started blogging about books in the middle of 2008 when I had been just sort of starting to discover that that was a thing people were doing. At the time, I was working for Barnes & Noble doing some event planning and a local author came into my store with a flyer for her book asking if she could do an event. The flyer had quotes from a blogger on it and I had never heard of this blogger before or had even really known that there were such a thing as book bloggers. So I googled and found out what it was and I discovered The Literate Housewife, uh, which is run by Jennifer Connor, and that led me down the rabbit hole of other book blogs and other communities that existed online and it was revelatory. Um, I didn't have many friends in Richmond yet. I had not lived here very long. I definitely didn't have a bookish community and very few of my coworkers at Barnes & Noble actually read the kinds of books that I read. So I was looking for a creative outlet and a way to connect about books and blogging just kind of out of nowhere appeared to be that thing. Not knowing anything about blogging or technology or WordPress or the publishing industry, I got a WordPress account and I just started. I just decided that I would figure it out as I went along. I made some mistakes along the way. I still make them. Uh, that's part of the deal when you work online is that you make your mistakes publicly and you do your learning in front of your audience. I think it's really exciting most of the time and that it's worth the uncomfortable moments when you have them. Um, so that was great. And I just chugged away at it for three and a half years. In mid-2011, I started seeing buzz that something called Book Riot was coming. I had not been asked to be a contributor. Uh, the story goes now that they thought maybe I was going to be a competitor of some kind, uh, which I wasn't, but I appreciate credit for having plans that I didn't actually have. Um, and I remember sending the Book Riot Twitter account a direct message and just being like, who are you guys and what are you up to? And I got a very vague, mystifying response about like, oh, you'll see soon. So the site launched and I loved what I saw there. And I already knew Jeff O'Neill, who's the executive editor and the CEO of Book Riot. We had known each other from blogging for several years at that point. 
So at one point we were joking about writing something together that had to do with the Jersey Shore reality show and books. And he asked if we could run that at Book Riot instead of on our own personal blogs. And I said, yes. Uh, so that's how I became a Book Riot contributor, writing about Snooki. And that's like the Book riot thing ever. And I'm really glad it was how I began. It's also my interests all pushed together at once. Somewhere in that process, I went poking around at Book Riot and saw that they were looking to hire a community manager. And I had been doing some freelance community management for other book related companies and also for authors, teaching them how to use the internet to reach their readers. So I just asked Jeff if they were still hiring and they were, and I sent a resume, and I remember having a Skype call with him and our COO, Clint Kabler, and you know, talking about work and strategy and what I wanted to do and what Book Riot was and what I would be responsible for, and very much feeling like I was faking it till I made it. It's that imposter syndrome where even when you know that you know what you're doing, when you're asked to explain it to someone else, you feel like they're just about to find out that you're a fraud. Um, but Jeff and Clint hired me and I started working in November of 2011 part-time running primarily the Facebook and the Twitter account uh, for Book Riot being the public voice of the site. It was so exciting and working with the contributors and just getting to know everyone there. And after blogging on my own, and doing sort of the same thing for a while. It was so refreshing to just get to write about whatever I wanted, to put crazy things together and to not feel restricted to that, do a guest post or write a book review thing that was book blogging at the time. Um, book blogging looks pretty different now and I think that Book Riot has had something to do with that, but back then uh, when we first started it felt revolutionary. Eventually I got more hours with Book Riot and more responsibilities and gradually became the managing editor of the site, which is what Amanda does and does beautifully now, um, scheduling the content that goes up every day. And more than that, it's working with the contributors behind the scenes to shape the philosophy of how we think about what Book Riot is, what we want to do, the kind of company that we want to be, the kind of community that we want to have both internally in the way that we challenge and support each other, but also the public facing community. What are the values that we want to convey to the people who read the sites and who participate in them? And that was such a growing experience. After doing that kind of job for, uh, for Book Riot for I think about a year and a half, I did that every day. Um, we decided to launch Panels, which is the comics website. So Amanda took over as managing editor of Book Riot and we hired Paul Montgomery to be the managing editor of Panels. And then I started actually doing director of content and community stuff, which had been my title for a while, but like in small companies, people often just make up their titles and we totally just made mine up and then we're constructing the job as it needs to happen. Now I work with Amanda and I work with Paul as they are the captains of their respective ships. Um, I get to hang out behind the scenes with the contributors and help guide the community discussion and be one of the deciders about what the values of this company are and what the goals are. I work on our quarterly box. I'm the one who decides what goes in that. And usually I'm just looking for books that I loved that I think our subscribers would love too, but maybe haven't heard about. And so I take the one book and then start to pair up other things with it and look for items that go with it. I get to host the podcast every week with Jeff talking about what's new in the world of books and reading. And it's been so fun uh, to hear from listeners of that. It also feels like a huge privilege that people trust us to make something good and interesting and they put us in their ears for an hour every week. And um, that just blows my mind. We have Book Riot Live, which is our first event coming up in the fall and I'm doing some of the work on that. I also do a bunch of work on the business side of Book Riot now, which is a thing I never would have anticipated. You know, there's all sorts of unglamorous but necessary pieces that go into making the thing you see when you come to Book Riot and so when people email me and say like, oh, your job must be so fun, you must just love it. That's true, I do, I love my job and the people are incredible and so much of my job is fun, but my days are like most people's days. I have a, you know administrative tasks to take care of. Um, I've got fires to put out, unexpected stuff goes wrong and you scramble to fix it and just hope that you don't do very much damage. I joke that my job is different every six months, but it really is. The, the way that a small company develops and grows is so fast that there's always something new 
um, and always some challenge for me to take on. And that keeps me really interested and engaged. I love that I don't know what my job is going to look like a year from now, and I really couldn't guess what it's going to be like five years from now. I think a lot of the people who do send the questions about the origin story aren't necessarily asking how I got here so much as they're asking how they could get here. And I wish that I had a good answer for that, but I don't. I don't think that this path could be duplicated. I definitely didn't come up with it in advance, and I don't know that this path will be possible for someone else. Um, as Amanda continues to do her work with Book Riot, she'll move into something else, but we don't know what that's gonna be yet. If you wanna work with Book Riot, the best thing to do is to first become a contributor. We hire from within, so look for information that'll come out later in the spring about how to become a contributor. And what we're looking for are those voices that are new and different and interesting, that are talking about books in the way that Book Riot talks and thinks about books, but that add something to our community. So apply for the site, submit work that you think makes you stand out, and I guess really just cross your fingers then. Um, we get a, a ton of applications and we take very few of them, so it's also about you know being prepared but being lucky. If you just want a job like this job, I think it's the same thing. Find your literary community, whatever that means to you, and then find what you're good at within that community and develop your skills there. Get even better. And then you'll have opportunities to expand those skills into new areas and say yes to those opportunities. I'm just gonna quote a bunch of pop culture. Luck favors the prepared has been one big part of of my career and the other part is the Amy Poehler yes please philosophy of um, when a new challenge gets thrown at you just say yes and figure it out on your way. So if you want a job like this I think it's um, it's great to know you're passionate about books but I don't subscribe to the school of find your passion and then figure out a job that you can shoehorn your passion into. Um, get involved in a literary community, do work that you're interested in and get better and better and better at that work and look for opportunities. I don't know if I ever would have come to work for Book Riot if I hadn't asked for the position and the job has changed my life, the people have changed my life and not just in a career trajectory way of opening up new opportunities and helping me see pathways that I didn't even know existed and that maybe didn't even exist at all, but they've changed who I am. Uh, it's incredible and I couldn't have planned it or guessed or strategized. So my only advice is jump in. Whatever you jump into, do it as well as you can possibly do it. Own up to it when you screw up and learn from those mistakes and let the people around you teach you how to be better and then just follow every next opportunity and don't be afraid to ask for those opportunities. There's this huge myth in internet community that it's all about who you know and that if you're just out there doing a good job, opportunities will fall in your lap. It's if you build it, they will come. And maybe they will, maybe you'll get super lucky and someone will see the work that you do and will just knock on your door and toss an amazing job in your lap. But my experience is that it's not just that. You have to build it and then you have to tell them that you've built it and tell them why the thing you've built is awesome and why you are uniquely qualified to do the thing that they're looking for. Do the work so that when the luck shows up, you're ready. I don't know what the next year will really hold for Book Riot. I don't know what the next five years will hold. I really don't know what will come after Book Riot, but it's been already such a phenomenal thing to be a part of. I hope this is helpful and interesting. You can shoot me questions in the comments down below or on Twitter at Rebecca Shinsky, S-C-H-I-N-S-K-Y. Thanks for asking and thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.